Hello internet and welcome back to another language learning log. Today's language learning log four, it's supposed to be about grammar and syntax, but I'm just gonna tell you why I think learning grammar and syntax is important when you learn your target language and why you should intensely focus on learning the grammar of a target language and perhaps equating it to the grammar of your native language. For example, for me, my target language would be Japanese and my native language would be English uh, and why it's so important to understand the grammar of both languages, but not really talk about any specific examples because I haven't written stuff out for that. Anyway, if you don't know me already, my name is Mark and my goal for this past summer has been to teach myself as much Japanese as possible. So that's in June, July, and August, which is fast approaching. And it's going pretty well. It's slower than I would have liked, but I'm learning quite a bit and it's, it's a great experiment. I'll be going into my progress at the end of the video, but I wanna to quickly touch upon how I think grammar is really important and what my experience has been learning grammar. So uh, just like last learning log, this is gonna be pretty chill, pretty whatever. And then, you know, me documenting my progress at the end is the main thing. So the first thing that I wanna throw out there is my history of linguistics in a way. When I first started taking linguistics classes, all of a sudden things became a lot clearer when I was trying to learn languages. For example, possessives in Brazilian Portuguese made a lot of sense and I actually really liked how that worked. Uh, the mystery of être verbs and avoir verbs in French all of a sudden became clear. There's an actual pattern, it's not just arbitrary exceptions all over the place. The more I've learned in my linguistics classes, the more that has become apparent to me of like, wow, this is really important. Why doesn't any language learning app teach me this stuff? It's like jumping into calculus, which is a branch of math without knowing algebra first. You need to know the underlying operations of algebra to do calculus. When you learn a new language, it's not supposed to just be, okay, this is how you say this, in your new language and you memorize that. With enough practice, I'm sure you can reverse engineer the, the patterns, but as adults, and this is my theory, many other people's theories too, as with many things, as I come up with the, all these cool ideas, I'm realizing that they're not actually new at all, which is fine. Learning the grammar of English has shown me what the patterns are in languages, where adverbs are used, how negation is truly structured, in generative grammar, some technical terms are like head movement and little VP shells and all this stuff that becomes very clear and I make connections when I'm learning a new language of, okay, this is how they do it in that language, boom, done. Very simple example that I have talked about so much is if you jump into a language like Japanese that is fundamentally different from English, and what I'm learning is that it is fundamentally different on a thinking level. A language like Japanese that is fundamentally different, you, I really think it is going to be insanely difficult to just say, here's the English, here's the Japanese. That's how it's translated. So on a very, very simple level, and I use this example all the time because I don't have enough confidence in myself to talk about a more complex example yet, is the word order. In English, it's I throw the ball. In Japanese, it's uh, watashi wa boru o nagimasu, which is, I, watashi wa, so watashi is me. Wa indicates that the previous thing is the subject, I believe. Um, boru is the object, so ball, and then o nagimas, o, I'm not exactly sure what that is, but nagimas and the ending is, as asu is specific for the verb. But anyway, nagimas, that's I, the ball, throw. The word order there is fundamentally different. So if we're coming from English, then naturally the boy throws the ball should be shonen wa nagimasu boru, except it's not. In fact, the transliteration of Japanese would be the boy the ball throws. While it might not be the right way to say this sort of thing, it demonstrates the point of SOV. I imagine shonen is some specific change in the grammar of the sentence as opposed to otakonoko, but you might understand this pattern after a while. You might you would pick this up quite quickly jumping into Japanese, but knowing it before you go into it makes life a lot easier, in my opinion, in my experience. And knowing how important word order is, how this influences things is just super crucial. In French, they have something called V to T movement that doesn't exist in English. To me at least, learning about the grammar behind this, and I'm not gonna go in depth that much about this stuff, but learning that the verb can move up into the tense position, if that means anything to you, was like, huh, that's kind of cool. And it made French click a little deeper. I really recommend looking up the grammar guides for your target language. Now, I've mentioned this in past learning logs, but again, LingApp has offered to give some viewers some free trial subscriptions. So if you want to look up the grammar in your target language, throw something new you've learned in the comments down below. Let me know you'd be interested in a LingApp subscription 
and we can get you hooked up for a month or so. There is a site I came across, fluentin3months.com. They have a lot about different languages and I'd recommend it a lot. There's a page about Japanese grammar. Oh, and I can actually do this because I'm, hey, what do you know? I can actually do this. So there is a whole page about grammar and particles. So there's different types of verbs. In, in Japanese, verbs don't have conjugations. In French, there's technically six. There's none of that in Japanese. However, adjectives have different conjugations. In Russian, there are six declensions, technically, for different nouns. Word order is kind of irrelevant. If something is the subject, it'll sound different than it's, if it's the object. In English, the only place that I think this exists is pronouns. She and her are two different cases. Now imagine that difference for every noun ever. And there you have why I quit Russian early on. I'll return to it one day, but Japanese had a lot more intrigue going for it at the time. So yeah, this is a very basic overview of some Japanese grammar and I would just take your target language, plug it into Google and look up a grammar thing and just read through a guide like this because automatically it makes things kind of clear. If you're looking for how to say the or a something, that doesn't exist in Japanese. There are no genders for words as it says here. I don't wanna, I don't wanna get too into specifically Japanese, but hopefully you get my point. My whole theory, hypothesis, whatever, is that as adults, we can't learn language as children do. It's just not feasible. Children are sponges, to put it one way. We cannot learn a language simply by opening a language app and going through the exercises, whether we do it for five minutes a day or 30 minutes a day. I recommend, and this is just my experience, taking a language learning app, learning app, Hey Lingo, Duolingo, Rosetta Stone, and mindfully saying, okay, these parts come from there. What does this mean? When I'm watching TV, right? I'm watching some anime and I'm, some of the subtitles off, some of it's not. I always hear Watashiwa and I'm like, well, Where's that all coming from? And the other day I went to a bookstore and got this rough guide to Japanese and I learned that wa is simply used as a particle to indicate the subject. So if I say watashi wa, that is me, that is the subject. Shonen wa, that's the boy as the subject. I think it's a specific case of boy, but whatever. Ah, uh, long story short, grammar is important. And if you're an adult, you have the cognitive faculty to learn grammar of a target language. It's not the most fun thing in the world, I personally find it very fascinating, but I do think it's important. It allows us to draw parallels between our target language, for me that's Japanese, and our native language, for me that's English, without looking at very, very specific examples. Especially in a language like Japanese, as I am quickly learning, context is so important because the subject is often omitted from sentences because of the context. If you don't look at the grammar, I don't think you'll learn the rules. You, you gotta learn the rules and how the rules are broken because rules are in many cases made to be broken to do things. Yeah, that's my spiel on grammar. I'm not gonna try to give you a grammar crash course. If you're fascinated, some technical terms to look at would be generative grammar, syntax trees might be fascinating, different phrase types. I'm gonna get some more water. If you don't have water on you, take a minute, pause the video, get some more water. Hydration check. All right, hydration in hand. Now we get to me, all about me. <laughs> I have some bullet points for progress, but the first thing I wanna throw out there is I finished the katakana section of the workbook, yay. There is a final review section and I will be doing that for the next learning log, which will be in two weeks. These last two have been weekly just because I missed the last one. Oh yeah, so the short stories book. At the very beginning, I said I wanted to read one of these a week, or at least try to. And I quickly realized that I need to learn how to read and write. So my katakana needs a lot of work still, and I'm learning the importance of kanji, but looking at the first sentence, in this short stories book, um, there are many of these. This company makes a lot of them. I think they're really cool. It's called Lingo Mastery. I found them on Amazon. Just looking at this first sentence, now that I can sort of read kanji, uh, I can't read kanji yet. Now that I can read hiragana and katakana and have an idea of what particles are, this first sentence would be ayako ha, which is not wa, but anyway, I, so I don't know what the ha is there for, but I can see that it says Ayako. We got some kanji with some hiragana above it on how to pronounce it. And I've learned that kanji is, each kanji is two hiragana. Like, a, how do you say that? So den can have two different kanji meanings associated with it. Again, context, importance of context. And then there's ni, and then there's no, uh, and then there's ri mas. So mas is the verb ending. And then if I go to the English translation page, I mentioned in a past learning log, it would be nice if there was a gloss, but I'm actually glad there's no gloss this time because I get to make the gloss. So if that first sentence is Ayako rides trains every day, well, we know Ayako. I assume the hiragana there is for 
grammar purposes, it's a particle or something. Then we have the two kanji, which I don't know what they mean, but because trains is bold, then I'm assuming those two kanji are for trains. And then ni no urimas is riding. So norimas must be riding. Um, maybe the ri is an ending, like rimas is the whole verb ending. If I look at the next page, or a few pages next, we see that those first two kanji are mainichi, which is every day. So technically the gloss is ayako, every day, trains, rides. And to English that becomes ayako rides trains every day. And that's how I'm gonna go through this book. Um, so one of my goals for the next learning log, and I'll write this down, is to read the first short story fully. Is just read this first three page story, pronouncing the hiragana, katakana, whatever. I've been working on Heylingo, which is an app video coming about that, about gamification app soon, so keep an eye out for that. I've been watching some anime, it's been good. I've been rewatching some shows without subtitles, so I can pay more attention to listening. I'm learning that intonation is incredibly important, just like context is. Uh, I finished the katakana section. Some books, 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 books. I went to find some flashcards that I could hold physically. Uh, but instead I picked up this rough guide of Japanese, which has some phrases in it, which I think are good. So a great way to practice kanji, a good way to just practice pronouncing hiragana and katakana of various different terms. And it has some tips on grammar, but we have two main resources. So the first one is Making Sense of Japanese by Jay Rubin. He's a Japanese lit professor. I really wanted to talk about something he mentioned in his book. Quote, one of the most satisfying experiences a human being can have is to train his or her mind actually to think in a foreign mode, the more nearly upside down and backwards, the better. I have a learning log planned. Is it the next one? No, it's two, language log six is about why speaking is crucial and I wanted to talk about philosophy. And this is really important because with a language like Japanese, the thinking is fundamentally different and I'm seeing that. Using the grammar guide, which I'll talk about in just a minute, it's, it's important to use Japanese examples to learn Japanese, which is another fault that I think language learning apps have is their reliance on English to whatever translation. This, and then just the intro of this book has shown me that Japanese is, so context is so important. So my goal to finish this book is gonna be within the next two weeks. So by the next learning log, I will have this book done. Let me read that, let me write that one down. It's not very long. Um, if you're someone who is learning Japanese, I think it's great so far. The lastly, in terms of books, and I mentioned this in the last learning log, but Tay Kim's Grammar Guide, it was a PDF I found online. It was a website originally, I guess. I'm on chapter three, which is the basic grammar chapter, and this is my Kindle. It says a lot of the same things, and there was just this, it's very frank, it's very frankly written. And I just finished a section on kanji, which is like three pages, but it's just like demystifying the underlying things is what I was missing in my French education, which is what I did in middle school and high school. Everything was a comparison to English and here's what this is and here's why you should say it in English. So many textbooks, as as Kim has written, are focused on, it's like, here's the saying, here's how you say it. Sure, here's the grammar, here's the fundamental difference, but here's this phrase and go ahead and say it. And if you always look at examples like that, you just, you won't get there. Not much progress, quite frankly. It was mostly just finishing the katakana section, uh, watching anime. I want to start speaking by August 1st. So now, you know, watashi wa boru onagimasu. I throw the ball. I don't know if that's right. That's not a really a sentence I've looked up. Shonen wa, shonen wa boru onagimasu. That's a sentence I looked up but I'm inserting watashi wa there just because I think it's right. And something I also mentioned in the last learning log that I, I'm noticing is very helpful is you never really need a middleman. You know, if I want to learn how to say stuff, it's like all of a sudden watashi is is me. I no, I no longer need to think I watashi. It's no longer a thing, it's just watashi. So maybe I'll learn that abstract thoughts. Oh, this language log is kind of poop, but whatever. <laughs> all in all, my goal of demystifying Japanese is going very well. I went to get ramen with some friends last night and the whole menu was like in Japanese. Obviously there was some English, but I looked at it and immediately was like, wow, kanji is very prevalent. And I'm learning that kanji is really always used. Hiragana is almost only used for grammar and stuff. Po I'm, I'm gonna start Pokemon Let's Go Eevee in just Hiragana, or I think it also uses Katakana, but as a way to practice reading it, I'm actually gonna go play that for a bit as part of my practice. Okay, so this is just me choosing the um, language. Uh, that says Nihongo, which is Japanese in Japanese. So if I hit the A button, um, you can choose to play in kana or play with kanji. Um, and the reason why I'm not gonna do the kanji right now is simply because 
I want to practice reading Kana. So if I go ahead and hit play in Kana, I'm not going to be able to understand because I'm not going to be able to like read things. So I didn't choose it because I'm not trying to learn vocabulary. I want to practice reading. So if we say Haji, because it's she, so ji, Haji me mashita, which means welcome. So Haji me mashita, and then I hit A. Uh, for, <laughs> so a good practice of hiragana and katakana. Uh, and my only goal is to read it. But yeah, so demystifying Japanese is going very well because I was looking at the menu and I was like, you know, I can actually read the hiragana. This doesn't look like nonsense to me anymore. As weird as it may sound, 2000 kanji covering 95% of, you know, daily Japanese doesn't sound too bad. <laughs> uh, it's just gonna be learning pronunciation and stuff. Yeah, so my goals for the next learning log, and if you had goals of your own, don't forget to post them in the comments down below. Uh, my goals are to read the first short story fully, finish this Making Sense of Japanese book as a main reading thing. I wanna finish a lot of books. So keep an eye out for the July reading ramble. I will finish a lot of books. And then finishing the final section of this book. I'll definitely have the time. I just need to remember that every choice is in service of a dream. And then I wanna start speaking on by August 1st. And I think for now that will be writing journal entries, very simple things of what I did that day and speaking to myself. And then I'll ask my friends if I can try having conversations with them because I wanna be at a base level of some sort. Whew. The first half of this learning log was pretty poor, but uh, I ranted and that's what they're for. So yeah, again, goals, language learning or not, feel free to post them in the comments down below. If you have questions for me, post them in the comments as well. None of this is professional, it's all experiential, so yeah. Thanks for watching, have a good one, and as always, don't forget to stay Awesome. See you next week.